So ordered. Thank yeah, you very much, uh, Ranking Member. Uh, we'll now uh, yield to the state of Michigan, where Representative Lisa McLean is recognized for her five minutes. Uh, Representative McLean, you're recognized. Thank you. And before I get started, Ms. Raymond, did you want to finish your thought? I was done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> then I'll, I'll start just with a general question to Ms. Mr. Helig, because um, we've talked a lot about charter schools and what happens if they close, and, and, and we're all concerned about that, right? Goodness gracious, what happens if they close in the middle of the school year, right? Um, we want to make sure that we're protecting the children. Um, what happens when a public school fails? Well, that's a good question. How, how do you define uh, failing, Congresswoman? Same way we define failure for charter schools. Well, I'm, so I'm what gonna... happens, it's real simple. One, do you have a determination whether a public school is failing, mm -hmm. yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yes, you do? Well, I was, I was asked to do that work for, for Rod Page when I worked in Houston. Did you want me to say more on that or just leave it? I'm just asking, do we have a measurement for when a public school fails? Yeah, we, yes, we yeah, do, yeah, no, we don't. We, we, bureaucrats do create arbitrary measures for failing schools. So yes, yes we have that measure for, for when public schools fail? Yes, bureaucrats Thank do you. create okay, that yes. one. Yes. Okay, I appreciate that. So what happens to a public school when it fails? Well, we should make investments in that. I'm not things. asking what should. I'm asking when a public school fails, what happens? Well, I can tell you what, what happens in Texas, in Houston, they've gone and taken away the schools from the community. That's, that's what's happening in Houston. But do, I, I, I'm, I'm, I think that we need to make investments in the things that we know I, matter. I, I understand. When a public school fails, this is, this is where I'm trying to wrap my head around. Sure. We have two se separate sets of rules for the same children, which is kind of interesting to me. Okay. If a charter school fails, we have all these rules and regulations and it closes, right? And it, it, if a public school fails with less rules, r less regulations, mm -hmm. we just want more money to fix the problem. So if money is the answer for public schools, why wouldn't we give money to the answer for charter schools? So with that, I'm going to switch my um, questioning now to Mr. Poncidio. The National School of Choice Awareness Foundation January survey found that 72% of parents considered, not, but considered different schools for their children. A 35% increase in t since 2022. Right? What do you see is, is driving such a significant increase in school of choice? In 35%. Yeah, um, I think the short answer may be COVID. Uh, okay. For years, I have pointed out that uh, what happens inside of the American school classroom is a bit of a black box. Uh, we, we don't really know. COVID ripped the lid off of that black box, as it were, so suddenly your child's school was coming onto your laptop, onto your kitchen table every day all, acro all across America. In many and hopefully most instances, parents were, were edified by what they saw. In some number of, of cases, unfortunately, parents were, were aghast at what they saw. And when parents are unhappy with their school, uh, they tend to want something else. And if they are in a public school uh, that is, that is uh, not doing well, then they're, they're going to seek choice. Congressman, if I, if I also may uh, just answer your previous question about what happens when a public school fails. Well, in 2002, I went to work at the lowest performing public school in New York City's lowest performing district. It is now 2024. That school is now the lowest performing school in New York City's lowest performing district. Well, we just have measurements. I thought we just talked about we had measurements for those public schools and they close. Why didn't that one close? That's a very good question, Congressman. Hmm. Do we have, dip? that's interesting, but we care about the children, right? Okay, just checking. So in my district, over 3,300 charter, we have 3,300 charter school students, right? Um, I'm, I'm wondering if you could help, but there's a, there's a need, there's a want, maybe not a need, but a want for more charter schools, right? There's a waiting list to get in, right? Which I would think would be a good thing. Um, can you describe the roadblocks that exist at the local and state level um, in develop, developing more options? Sure. Why can't we have more of these schools that parents, 
are demanding for their children. I understand that we're talking about this at the federal level, but in New York, where I've spent my entire education career, there has been a charter school cap in place for nearly a decade. Hmm. So despite the fact that uh, the city in particular, New York City, is home to some of the highest performing, highest demand public charter schools in the country, there has been no more room at the end, so to speak. State lawmakers have, have blocked the creation of new charters. Why do you think we're so afraid and so scared of charter schools? That's a very good question. I don't have an answer for you. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you uh, very much. Let's go to the great state of Connecticut where Representative Hayes is recognized. You're recognized. Thank you, and thank you to all of our witnesses for being here today. I just want to make a few corrections to the record before I get into